Richard, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, Michael. Glad to see you and glad to be here. Um, and yes, uh, so we're actually tomorrow, uh, February 11th, is the seventh International Day of Women's and Girls in Science. Um, their theme for this year, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also includes Water Unites Us. So each, uh, each year they have a different theme um, and some different goals. And the aim this year is to recognize the role of women and girls in science, uh, not only as beneficiaries, but also as agents of change. And they want to accelerate, pro accelerate progress towards the achievement of Sustainable Development Goals SDG6, which is the Clean Water and Sanitation Goal. Um, a wonderful organization. Uh, we'll put the uh, we'll put the link to that in the uh, in the podcast here, so that everybody can check it out. Um, and so along that end, um, we've got a very special guest today, uh, a woman engineer. Um, she is the global engineering market manager for 3D printing at M Holland Company, and has developed in depth knowledge and experience with her uh, and experience expertise in 3D printing. Um, through her professional work, as well as at home, uh, where she has her own 3D printing lab and nine of her own 3D printings. Um, Haley Ann Friedman leads the M. Holland's Additive Manufacturing Group. She directs the strategy and engineering of efforts of the division, uh, advises clients on equipment and product selection, process optimization and, op and adoption, design and engineering, and material and application validation. Uh, in other words, she does a lot of stuff. Uh, she also serves as the North American Chair of the Women in 3D Printing. She's the Vice Chair of Women in Manufacturing. She's active in the Northeast Ohio Manufacturing Cluster, the Additive Manufacturing User Group, and the Society of, of Women's Engineers. Uh, and she's won more awards than we actually have time to list today. So uh, please welcome our special guest, Haley Ann Friedman. Hi, Haley Ann. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, this is a, it's really an honor to have you here and uh you know there there's a lot of uh you know girl young girls women you know that are that are looking for for um you know ways to 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 get into the engineering world and and I think you know you're a really good person to talk to you know on this particular topic. Um one of the questions that I have uh for you Harleyan is uh you know was, was there a particular catalyst that that led you toward engineering? My my catalyst was uh Sister Anne Carroll. I went to a, uh, a Catholic school when I was a young young in, and in sixth grade, you know, she put together a drafting class, and it was the the reason why I'm here today. Um, is that uh, that class, and you know, maybe there was a catalyst for you that that led you toward engineering, maybe a mentor or something like that. So maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. So. I think my path is a little bit more unconventional, uh, and but I also think that it speaks to uh, not necessarily the lack of opportunity, but just the lack of education of uh, you know how young women can get into the engineering and manufacturing field. So I actually grew up in California, and you know there's different types of manufacturing in California. You know there's a lot of food manufacturing, and you know but you're not you're not really submersed uh, in it like you are in maybe the Midwest and. Uh, you know, I didn't know any engineers growing up, um, at least not that I knew of. Uh, and I didn't really have anyone in my life who was uh, really involved in the manufacturing field. Um, so I actually started out trying to pursue, uh, you know, medical of some kind, you know, those types of things, because that's really what I grew up around. Uh, and then I moved to the Midwest. Uh, you know, I just wanted to go somewhere else, you know, being in California your whole life. And I moved to northern Wisconsin. Uh, which was very different and very cold uh, compared to where I grew up. And uh, I was kind of industry hopping and I was in uh, optical lens manufacturing, uh, you know, working for a, a, a buying group and manufacturing company in optical, which is, you know, very different from, um, you know, every other type of manufacturing. And I loved it and I was good at it, but I found it very boring, like just completely boring. The uh, just the culture was very different. And so I had, just a lot of friends that I had made in the Midwest who were engineers and did work in manufacturing. And I went on a tour of the Caterpillar facility in South Milwaukee. Uh, and just, I was completely mind blown. And I just had this feeling, I was like, Oh my God, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to work in manufacturing. And, you know, I've always been kind of a maker and artistic and, you know, really just creative person. And 
I, I found a, just a perfect blend of, wow, I can take all of my creativity and artistic nature and apply it to something that's really productive and beneficial in manufacturing. And, you know, now that I'm here, I mean, I couldn't imagine working anywhere else. Uh, so I wish I had a, a mentor. Uh, you know, I wish I had somebody to show me that earlier on in my life because I would have I would have found my career like a decade earlier. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm really glad that I'm here now. Um, but, yeah, I. I know I have a, a pretty unconventional path compared to a lot of other people. Yeah, that's kind of what it did. What really cemented it for me too was like going and visiting a real factory and, yeah. and seeing stuff. I had the the pleasure of going to a technical trade school when, you know, when I was in high school, and they they brought us on tours and everything, and it really really did cement that. So I'm, I'm glad you kind of had the same uh, thing happen to you. That spark. Um, yeah. I would have thought that walking into a giant global mining facility would feel magical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the smell of molten steel yeah. and everything. It's just, it's just awesome. You know? Um, <laughs> um, so the company you work for uh, now, M Holland, right? You know, maybe you could tell us a little bit about M Holland and, and maybe some things that you do in particular to support women in engineering. Yeah, so uh, M. Holland Company is traditionally a, a plastic injection molding distribution company. So they've been around for 70 years, privately owned by uh, the Holland family. And uh, and a couple years ago, um, I was working for a machine tool manufacturer who had brought in 3D printers. And that was, you know, very quickly becoming my expertise because I just, I loved it. And uh at the time, I had a, a boyfriend that I had just relocated up to Milwaukee uh, to, you know, be in the same city, and then he got relocated to Chicago like two weeks after I got there. It was, it was so annoying. <laughs> and so I was, you know, I loved my job and everything, but I wanted to kind of see what was out there and and if we could be in the same city because that would be convenient. Uh, and so I found the M Holland position, and they were looking for somebody to come in and uh and essentially start a business unit for 3d printing so they didn't have much experience they had you know had a distribution contract with owens corning and that was really it and so i came in and really analyzed okay what could we do as a business here how could we how could we utilize 3d printing to benefit the way that we service our customers and the injection molding side so uh i was the whole department for uh like a year <laughs> and it was really investigative and you know working with our technical development engineers and working with our account managers just trying to understand how we work with customers and figuring out how the market could could apply and so after you know all that review it was like wow we can't just exist in materials distribution we have to exist in everything for 3d printing because 3d printing is it's really cool and it's awesome but it's also kind of mysterious and nobody really knows what they're doing and you know, there's just a lot of nuance with it and so instead of just selling materials we uh, created a, a basically a consultancy where, you know, no matter what it is that you want to do with 3D printing, you can come to us. We'll either print parts for you or we'll find somebody else that can print the parts for you or we'll help you print the parts yourself and teach you how to do it. Uh, and so that involved building out uh, a team, you know, a team of, uh, of engineers. Uh, and because of, you know, my background and the way that really 3D printing has to be utilized in a, in a manufacturing field and business unit. You can't just have salespeople who are saying, yeah, buy a 3D printer. It's going to print everything. It's going to be amazing and be a be all end all. You know, you really need to be technically driven, understand the design constraints, the material constraints. Um, so so I built out a team of engineers and uh, I'm very proud that I have a female dominant uh, engineering team uh, and and uh, everyone kind of came from their own uh really their own areas. So I'm a very firm believer in hiring unconventional candidates, you know, partially because I was an unconventional candidate and that didn't get an opportunity to do manufacturing when I was younger, but really fell into it and, and perfect for it. And so I found other women uh, through interviewing that were very similar. You know, they had uh, one of our, our engineers, Rebecca, she was a recent graduate and we were hiring for a design engineer, which ideally you want like 10 years experience and various manufacturing fields to be a super strong designer. But I just had this like, it sounds a little crazy, but I just had like this feeling that she needed to be on our team. And so after, you know, pretty much two months of kind of figuring out how we were going to structure this position, I called her and said, look, this is a, a position where we really need somebody with a ton of experience. But if we give you three months to get, you know, 
to get a SolidWorks certification or, you know, some design training, learn, you need to learn how to write lattice. You need to learn how to topology optimize. Like you need to learn how to use all these different tools, but you've got three months. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can do it? And she was thrilled, said yes. And I mean, she's now been with us for just under a year. She's phenomenal. I mean, she's absolutely incredible. Give herself yeah. like 20 minutes to get a insane design. And she's just like, you know, just like that. So, I mean, I, I want to practice what I preach. I'm obviously a huge advocate for uh, increasing diversity and inclusion in, uh, in the STEM field, but uh, you know, giving, giving women who might be more unconventional candidates in a traditional sense, an opportunity to come in and basically show us what they've got and make their own path has, has really helped us, you know, expand on that, um, you know, that entire, uh, objective yeah. and diversity and inclusion is also mandatory in our group. Uh, so because of all, you know, I'm involved obviously in a lot of different boards, uh, you know, I always found it challenging with my previous supervisors who, you know, at other companies that maybe didn't value diversity and inclusion as much. They would think that participating in women in manufacturing and engineering was just kind of like a, a hobby and not really necessary for your own professional development. So in our group, you are required to participate in some capacity in, you know, you can choose the groups that you want to participate in. But of course, everyone on our team is also very passionate about it. So they participate in virtually every group. So mm -hmm. that that's important, you know, yeah. pretty much saying you've got to do this. This is important and we will support you every step of the way. That That's really important to hear. And it's great to hear that, um, you know, PTC, we also have some some groups like that, that that we all get behind and sponsor and, and work with. So it's it's really it's really important, I think, to to open your eyes. Ignorance is not bliss. You got to know you know, what, what people are going through and what things are going on, you know, it's, it's really important. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, when, it, when it comes to, uh, you know, women's approaches to design, perhaps, you know, have you noticed any, any interesting differences, Haley Ann, with how perhaps, uh, women go about the design and, and engineering of a product? I want to make sure I answer this question without making generalizations because I, I don't want to put anyone in a box, right? Yeah. So I think that I, at least in my experience, I found the uh, the openness to change designs and be more uh, unconventional a little bit easier, uh, it, at least for for the female designers that I've worked with. But I think that that just comes with you know, some of the experience, some of the stuff that we work on is like cosmetics packaging or... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, even like marijuana packaging that needs to be child locked, you know, just kind of uh, odd things where you have to just come up with an idea with basically no background. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you haven't had some of the the issues, like we were talking about a 3D printed mascara brush the other day, where you know everyone's eyelashes are different and everyone's preferences for how they put on their mascara is different as well. And so having different types of designs in a brush to solve those problems um, is obviously easier if you use those products or, you know, you've, you've encountered that challenge. So it's, it's more so just the experiences and the, and the challenges and the way that maybe they would overcome them are different. Um, but I haven't noticed like a general, a general difference in at least the way that, uh, that they'll go about solving those problems, if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't know how to apply mascara, right? So, I mean, I would be a, probably a pretty bad designer. I'm sure I could learn, but, you know, it's a, uh, you know, I, I hear you on that. And it's, you know, it's, it's really easy to jump into generalizations, of course. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I like that answer. That's a good answer, I think. Yeah. Uh, Richard, um, what what do you have here? Oh, I, I get really excited when I hear people talk about 3D printing um, because I got to spend 10 years in that industry in the early days. Uh, I worked for DTM Corporation back in the 90s. Oh, I forgot um, about these, that. Yep, yeah, selector yeah. La selective laser centering machines. So, uh, hey, Leanne, I, I mean, you're you're quite active in, in, in 3D printing. Um, as the chair of the Women in 3D Printing user group, um, can you tell us a little bit about that group? And, you know, is it just for women uh, or is it pretty much open to all? Yeah, so w women in 3D printing uh, is is open to all. You know, we we do believe that it's important for uh, ally participation. You know, from an education standpoint as well, 
we have we we try to open it up for for women to really express some of the challenges that they're facing that maybe their allied colleagues might not be aware of and could play an active role in helping uh, alleviate or resolve some of those uh, problems. So it's a very, very open uh, organization uh, and it's open to the extent, and I'm only gonna use AMUG as an example, just because there are rules about um, who can participate in AMUG. They say that you need to be an active user of the technology in a commercial way so that you can attend um, their events, which is understandable, the types of uh, education and things like that. But in women in 3D printing, you can participate even if you just are generally interested in 3D printing. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's great. I mean, I, I think the more people that get interested in this technology, because it's it's still I hate to say it's still in its infancy mm -hmm. uh, because there's been a lot of development work done. Uh, but like you mentioned earlier, you, you know, there's still there's still some still some science behind it. There's still some skill behind actually creating 3D prints. Um, and I'm looking forward to the day where, you know, folks can push a button in their house and, and create something. Um, if, yeah. if, if people wanted to get involved with a 3D, uh, women in 3D printing group, how, how would they go about that? So there's a couple opportunities for involvement. You know, we're always looking for volunteers and ambassadors to help represent in their, their local areas. The biggest way that we can support uh, and promote and inspire other women in 3D printing is through networking and involvement, just being able to meet other people and connect and, you know, do all those different things. It's incredibly empowering. And so, you know, I know when I was living in Wisconsin, there was almost no 3D printing companies around me and I felt kind of isolated. Uh, and so I had volunteered to be an ambassador originally, which we're always looking for in new cities. Uh, even if there's not a ton of 3D printing companies in your area, you still may be able to support some of the other remote employees that might be able to, you know, work in that area and create virtual events or in-person events. So, you know, all of those things are really, really helpful for us. And we are actively looking for new ambassadors uh, uh, globally, but um, especially in North America. Uh, and so we do have events at, uh, at the larger trade shows uh, like Rapid and, you know, AMUG and things like that. So opportunities to connect there, but our website, uh, womenin3dprinting.com, that has, um, all of the upcoming events, it has local ambassadors that exist. Uh, you can connect with them on LinkedIn. You can reach out to them. Uh, and if you'd like to volunteer, you can volunteer on the website there. Uh, but following us on LinkedIn and uh, getting involved on the website is the best way to to truly jump in and, and get involved. Great, great. And I, will, I, I hope people that are watching or listening will, will do that because um, it's very important. Uh, and it's a great technology and a lot of fun to be to be a part of. Yeah. Um, so moving away from the, the 3D printing for a second, um, what about recommendations for young women or young girls that might be might be interested in engineering? Um, you know, how could you convince a young girl that that engineering is a great career for for anyone, really? So uh, I love talking to young women, even the ones who aren't necessarily considering it as a career because they don't know how amazing it can be. I mean, I think that getting a mentor when you are young and being able to see, you know, women in the industry who, you know, look like you having that representation or, you know, can be a real role model to show you the path and, you know, help you select even a college or, uh, you know, getting involved in Maker Girl, which is a, a STEM organization for young women, uh, you know, getting involved in those types of activities so that you can stay submerged in it because, even uh, even young women who have just a general interest in art or, uh, you know, drawing or graphic design or, you know, anything along those lines, all of those skills are very translatable to engineering uh, and uh, trying to consider that in a very practical way, you know, and, and I'll bring it back to my experience a little bit too. I went to a high school that spe uh, specialized in performing and visual arts uh, and uh, it was just, they had a, a very specific program, but I went there for that. And it wasn't shown to me as an opportunity of like, hey, you've got these very practical, uh, you know, ways of approaching these types of artistic projects. Here are some legitimate career paths that have financial security and, uh, you know, a lot of career growth opportunities and, you know, things like that, that you can apply to that. And I thought that was such a missed opportunity, you know, looking back in retrospect, because it was, you know, you could be an artist, you know, sure. But you can also be an engineer. You can also be, you know, an operator or, you know, work in that kind of capacity and apply those skills in a, in a practical and um, incredible way. So I really do recommend, um, you know, if you are a woman in engineering, 
talking about it, being very public, you know, encouraging the young women in your life that you may be connected with and, and volunteering yourself to really show somebody how cool it can be uh, is, is incredibly important. But I, of course, heavily support the Maker Girl organization because they are so inclusive for young women and, you know, young boys as well uh, to just see what STEM has to offer and, you know, try to get them into some programming that will help them uh, genuinely understand. So that would be my recommendation. If, if there's, a, if, if you have a child and they've got the potential to do this, or, you know, if, if you are a young woman that would like to, to participate, that's the path I would recommend taking. That's great. Well, yeah, I, I, that was going to be my next question is, is resources that they could, they could find to actually get started in engineering. Um, would that oh, be the, sorry, there was one more thing. There is a, oh. a young women's program and women in 3d printing. Uh, so that does focus on elementary schools, middle schools, and, um, you know, working with those young women. Um, I'm sorry, that's a newer program. Uh, but we have a, a leader of that, which is, uh, Janet, uh, and she is un unbelievable. Um, you can access her on LinkedIn, but we have a lot of volunteers who will help mentor in the women in 3d printing space as well for those young women. I know we, we were done talking about 3d printing, but I forgot about that organization for a second. So I want to make sure. But, but that actually, that also sounds like a good place for, for a young girl to get started. Go Absolutely. take a look at that. Go take a look there and, and maybe get involved. So that's wonderful. Um, hey, Leanne, I, I, anything else you'd like to like to tell the young, young ladies or the young girls out there uh, as far as uh, career in engineering types of careers that might be in engineering? Um, you know, I think I think my message is almost more so for, you know, the adults that help influence the development of these, you know, young women. It's it's obviously really important for us to celebrate, you know, our own progress and, you know, one another that are working in this industry. But I would really encourage everyone, uh, all of the women that are in this industry to be very public about you know, how your career is, you know, developing and all the opportunities that you had in your own path and not just communicating to the young women in your life, but communicating to your own network um, who might be able to encourage their children. Because I know that if I had had that option and had been presented with that path, and of course, it's not my parents' fault. My mom's a teacher and my dad worked for a bread company. I mean, they just didn't, they didn't really think of it as a possible career path. And to be able to show them that path and just even show them that option and really be a role model is is so important. So, you know, I would love to encourage people to do that and to really understand how much influence you have uh, as a, a, a woman in this industry uh, to help impact the future generations. Great. So what I'm hearing is mentor, mentor, mentor. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, hey, Leanne, it's been great having you on the show. It's been great listening to you. Um, I, I think I mentioned it earlier to you via email that I really, really enjoyed your your keynote address at the Women Who CAD on Shape user group meeting. Uh, and in fact, that's why we reached out to you specifically to, to come on this show. Um, and we couldn't be happier uh, that you agreed to show up. Uh, Michael, any final words for hey, Leanne? No, no, this is quite uh, inspirational. It has some real life uh, things that people can go out and and go out and do. Check out the websites um, in the groups that 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 you're part, you know, that Haley Ann is part of here. So thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And, and yeah, if anyone would like to talk about, you know, any of the programs, of course, you can reach out to me and I'll give you any information uh, that I have. But thank you both for having me today. I've really enjoyed our discussion. It was our pleasure. Thanks, Haley Ann. All right. Thank you. All right. That was great. It really is. Uh, it's wonderful uh, talking with Haley Ann and I always learn something new. Yep, um, absolutely. You know, it's the third or fourth time. I think I've uh, had the pleasure of uh, having a discussion with her. So it's, it's really nice. Yep, same here. Uh, before we get away from that, I do, I do want to mention the, uh, the women who CAD on shape user group meeting or yeah. on shape user group. Uh, their mission is to is you know very similar to, to what we're talking about here is to promote diversity amongst the Onshape users um, and ensure everybody feels welcome in in their community. Uh, they just met in January, had their first meeting of the year in January. Uh, they will meet uh, next April or this April, um, and I think they're actually trying to work out a uh, kind of a co meeting with the women in 3D printing. So I hope that uh, I hope that comes to fruition. Great. Yeah. So across the bottom of the screen, if you're on the YouTube, you'll see the uh, the link to that. We'll put it in the show notes, of course, if you're just on audio as well. Right. 
Uh, so we had a pretty impressive uh, on shape release this week, didn't we? We did. We did. I was really excited about this one. Obviously, it's uh, been something we've been uh, working on for for a long time. Some of the things in here. And our customers are demanding more uh, impressive capabilities and other aspects of the software as well. So, and, and um, they're getting them. They're getting them. <laughs> they're definitely getting. It. It's like <laughs> the third release in a row where it's been like amazing levels of uh, interesting stuff being added. So let me share my uh, screen here on uh, the Onshape forms here. So um very easy to find the on shape forms form.onshape.com and there's a new and on shape section where you can see everything that's going on so on january 27th we uh released the uh the next uh version of on shape and the biggest headline of course was the on shape render studio uh being released to general availability in beta form you know this is the first time that uh, this level of functionality has been added to a, uh, a, a pure cloud native platform where, you know, to do rendering, you know, you usually need a big CAD workstation, right? You know, yep. big graphics cards, you know, your, your computer melts while it's uh, doing the, the actual final process and you can't do anything else. So this is a big change for, for the workflow of people that want to produce uh, photorealistic images. Um, a big change for for the positive. You can run this on, on your Mac and your Chromebook, you know, whatever it might be that you're accessing on shape with. So and, and it's speedy. I'll tell you what. Um, that was the first thing. You know, I, as soon as I saw the the post go up, I I launched on shape, got my uh, my new trailer. By the way, I'm got a new trailer design that I'm working on, uh, and yeah, I, I created a render studio. And in 30 seconds, I had my first render. I mean, it was just it was just unbelievable. Um, and the, the speed that it renders, you know, when you're moving around, it, it, you know, I've used some rendering software before with some other platforms and, uh, this just takes the cake. Just amazing. Uh, just a little tea, uh, sometime, I think it's March, uh, we're going to have a very special guest, to, uh, to talk about, uh, an industry legend and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, we'll let the folks be surprised, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm looking forward to that interview. Uh, you know, expert in in all things rendering so it'll be yep. good to get his take on you know what what we should be looking for in um you know setting up scenes and and expert tips and tricks that you know for for any rendering package it doesn't exactly. have to be the yep. on shape one right so it's just uh you know we have one now and we're we're going to talk about it and and there's certain value propositions that are great about it of course so you know just being able to run it right here natively inside of your on shape document you just add a render studio Think of it as almost like a, a photography studio. You know, you're mm -hmm. taking a photo of your 3D model. That's what this is all about. Yep. And there's, I'm not going to go deep into it now because we're going to have a future session on this and there's lots of other sessions coming up. So I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder, but look at it. It's in beta now. If you're an on-shape professional or enterprise subscriber, you have this right now. All you have to do is just add it to your menu and, and you have it. So um, let us know how it goes. Share your images. You know, we, we'd love to see, you know, what, what types of, uh, artwork that, that you have, uh, planned, you know, from your 3d models, uh, in on shape. So that I actually able, was able to uh, make this video too, with my friend, uh, nice. Jay Tedeschi, um, who was on the show, you know, several times back. Yep. So, yep. uh, but they will be having a webinar. I think it's, uh. February 10th, if, if you haven't already, you know, if the, if you haven't listened already, <laughs> yep. it'll be, it'll already be, um, you know, that'll be recorded as well. So it'll be a full one hour deep dive uh, into the session and we will, uh, be, you know, there'll be all, all sorts of other things be, be promoting yep. the, the new release. Just uh real quick, February 17th, we'll have Roy Metalak, uh, Mut Mutalik, uh, we'll do a, a session on getting started in on shape rendering. So great. Great that yeah, Roy's a Roy's a great guy. We got to get him yep. on the show sometime. We do. Well. We do. Yeah. All so right. What else? What else do we have in this uh, in this release? Uh, more modeling improvements. You know, as our customers demand more, um, you know, more surfacing functions, things like that. Um, you know, OnShape has had very good uh, curve creation tools that are purpose built for the creation of 
you know, uh, geometry that's curvature continuous, you know, in this case, here's a, a bridging curve that you see right here on this like surface model for a, and you know, a, um, an iron, right. A, uh, for, for ironing your clothes, right. Yeah, that, your that your shirt looks very well in iron today, I must say. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah that bridge, that bridging curve came in what about three or four releases ago, right. It, it's been uh, there quite a while actually. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, that's, you know, I'm, I'm no surfacing expert, believe me. Um, but little things like this, help me when I am doing some surfacing. So the, the new improvement to the bridging curve here is that instead of just using uh, magnitude and bias as the method for controlling the, you know, how the, the, the flow of that curve is yep. created, uh, we now have the ability to set it to control point or control box almost right where you can see this kind of scaffold behind that spline there. And you're able to, move through the control points instead of moving through a magnitude and bias style way of working. And it will work with both curvature continuity and, you know, G1 and G2 continuity or C1 and C2, depending on which, uh, which curvature school you belong to. Um, so, you know, this is a really, really good way of kind of controlling those um, curvature offsets through a control point. So uh, really like excited that. about that one. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? We have some new options for highlighting selected faces that that just make a, a lot more sense. So if you look at this quick GIF here on the screen, as uh, Jake uh, Delano here, who uh, put this video together, you can see him selecting those faces and the faces that were actually selected as part of the selection set are still highlighted in their original position. And then you're seeing the preview you know, of the, the future position of it. So it's much more clear. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, next up this one, I really liked right here. You can just select right through translucent, uh, objects now. Yep. And, and you know, that's, that's one of those things I like to call a delighter, you know, I mean, those, those are the, the kind of changes that, that make, put a smile on your face when you see them. Exactly. And, and you can see they actually use the, model of the week that we're going to show in a second so about that? <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh next up some drawing improvements richard's favorite category right uh, it is um but I, I, and and i love that we we are helping our customers we're taking care of our customers now would i ever use a dot on my mechanical drawing no um because that's not how i was trained but that doesn't mean that other people don't want to so yeah it, um, yeah, for you, sure. You know, it's it's and, an architectural thing. Maybe on your tiny house, you would you would have a couple of architectural dimensions, right? You know what? I think you're right, Michael. So yeah. yes, I would use a dot. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's typically in that world, and you know we have customers involved in that world, you know, here and there. So yep. um, it's a uh, a good addition. Uh, also, something that I uh, liked in this release was the ex you know better accessibility to putting color in your notes, you know, on the fly, right? So yeah. we, we were able to set the color of a note, but you'd have to like set it in the the main options of the drawing. Now you can just do it kind of right on the fly, right in the uh, in the box here. So perfect. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing that's revolutionary there. It's just uh, it's a really good thing. You know, it's right there yeah. in front of you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a delighter. Um, feature script, the the language of 3D CAD that on shape has uh, put together. Here's uh, Lindsay Early, who's uh, one of our great technical services engineers uh, on the Onshape team demonstrating, you know, how you can actually, uh, via feature script, you know, we can return B-spline surfaces and curves uh, via feature script. So, nice. you know, there's all sorts of uh, things there. Uh, in the Onshape Enterprise package, we have uh, filters by role. You know, roles are a way of uh, setting up your permission schemes inside of the Onshape Enterprise system. Um, we also have some things in the Learning Center. Learning Center, uh, one of the favorite things uh, that I like about Onshape is it builds in the, the training yes. right into the platform, right? Um, and, and these two, these two changes here, these two updates are, are and I know rendering is great and, and the, you know, all the other changes, but for me, at my level of, uh, competence with on shape, uh, these were two very important things for me, um, especially the search option in the learning center. So, 
you know, I, I went through the learning center. I earned my certification. I've been using Onshape as, as much as possible, but it's really not my, you know, it's really not my day job kind of thing. So I don't get the kind of experience that other people do. So occasionally I have to go back and refer to some of these training videos and the option to be able to search through those is really important for me. So uh, thanks to whoever came up with that one. Uh, I will be using it extensively. Awesome. Yeah, there's a few other video updates as well for importing and exporting uh, data um, and uh, some dependency features that have been added to the part design uh, or part studio course. So definitely take a look at that. And, Yep. And of course, everybody's happy about the uh, the update. I, I saw the first the first <laughs> first message was a dream update. Yes, so. <laughs> it certainly was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, what's new. And uh, we'll talk about the the next one, which will hopefully be as as cool as well. So there, yep. I'm sure of, I'm sure it will be. It's an exciting so, time at on chain. On chain you, sure. you mentioned that they uh, they used the uh, used our model of the week in the uh, in the update post, right? That's right. The and that model comes from a woman comes, engineer. That's right, Lindsay Early once again coming through. Um, she uh, natively designed that drill here. Let me just uh, pull it up right here, and let me hide the uh, this other banner here. It's a little much. But yeah, here is the uh, link to the drill scrolling across the screen. Just shortened a uh, bit.ly link here, but uh, we'll put the full link in the show notes here. But uh, this is the model of the week. Uh, I think it's a pneumatic drill. Um, I think there's an air filter back there, so that's probably why yeah. I think it's a pneumatic drill. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this is a well-designed model. I've uh, shared it publicly here so you can take a look at it. Of course, we added a rendering uh, to oh, yeah. it as well. So uh, oh, I helped, very nice. I helped with the rendering. I did that rendering. Very um, nice. but yeah, it's a, uh, you know, that's the, the on shape, uh, model of the week. It, it's really nice because it, it's an example of how to best use multi-part part studios, you know, assemblies, you know, if we, uh, dive into this and, um, you know, let's isolate the, um, the engine. So we'll just go in here, the crank, connecting rod and piston, isolate those, maybe go in, do a quick section view. I love how you can kind of layer up the, uh, the different levels of uh, visibility together uh, in on shape and even leave this here. And, you know, of course, I'll just uh, you know, move the uh, connecting rod a little bit here. In fact, I could just animate it. Yeah, there is a mate in here that I can just pull from. I should have highlighted it earlier, but let's show you this. I, I typically, when I have something like that in my tree, I typically rename it as rotate me. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what I should have done. And I didn't do it, <laughs> but yeah, you can see as I spin the drill, yeah. you know, in reverse, nice. it's, it's updating the, uh, the system there. So yeah, wow. this is the that, model of the week. And that's a great one too. Uh, yeah. kudos to kudos to Lindsay. Absolutely. And a nice render too, Michael. Appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a photographer on the side, so I'm I'm loving, you know, it, it works very much like the way a photographer thinks the new yep. rendering application. So yeah. So I'll stop sharing that. But yeah, that's uh that was really what I wanted to show on the model of the week. Uh let's see, what do we want to talk about next? I guess it's uh, uh I think we're that's getting, it. yeah, we're getting well, we're getting close to the end. Um I do want to mention uh on shape live. 2022 is coming up soon. Uh, we'll be doing two events, actually. So on Wednesday, March 2nd, starting at noon Eastern time, uh, on Shape Live 2022 for the Americas. And then we'll actually follow that up the next day uh, for the folks over in Europe. And that'll start at 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, you can, there you go. There's the uh, link. You can register now. Uh, there's some great sessions coming up. I'm looking forward to a, a couple of them myself some tips and tricks sessions. There'll be a session on, on the new rendering options. Uh, and we'll also get some great keynotes from John Hirschdick and, uh, and Jim Heppelman. So yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope, I uh, hope our customers are as well. Um, and it's open to everybody. I mean, anybody can come into uh, on shape live. It's free. Uh, it's a one day event and I wholeheartedly encourage you to, to go ahead and sign up. Be there, be square. <laughs> are you doing a presentation this year, Michael? Yes, I am. I'm doing a presentation with uh, my colleague Katie Huffman uh, this year. Uh, Katie Excellent. runs our training 
group. So all the stuff that you see in the learning center and everything, she's responsible for maintaining and putting that whole system together and all the ideas and content there she's responsible for. So if, if you like the Onshape learning platform, thank Katie, because she's yep. she's really been the the person that that made that happen with her and her team. So it, it's yep. really good stuff. So yeah, we're doing a session on design communication tips and tricks. So Great. everybody loves a tips and tricks session. I look forward to seeing that one. Yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, we've got some some pretty exciting shows coming up. Um, on our next episode, we'll be talking to Matt Rohr, uh, one of the newer technical services engineers here at Onshape. Certainly not uh, new to the CAD world though. No, he certainly <laughs> isn't. Uh, I've known Matt for, for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, great guy, funny guy. Um, likes to be a jokester from time to time, but he's also very <laughs> serious about what he does. Yeah. He uh, he'll be talking about moving from, uh, from SolidWorks to Onshape uh, in support of the webinar. Uh, the webinar just was posted the other day. I encourage folks to, to take a look at that. Uh, listen to Matt's 10, re or 10 top things to consider when switching. Yeah. Uh, and we hope to draw a little bit more out of him uh, on the podcast. So we'll look forward to that. That'll be our next episode. And we mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, early March, we've got a great guest coming on. We'll be talking about rendering. So great. Uh, I hope folks have subscribed to our podcast. Uh, hit the like buttons for us because, you know, that's how our bosses give us kudos. Um, so we like to see that. Um, Michael, great show today. Uh, it was great having Haley Ann, Haley Ann on. Absolutely. Uh, she's a, a fantastic person and, uh, and a wonderful guest. Um, and it's always a pleasure to be here with you.